Good day, everyone. Um, welcome to our lecture series for the understanding the self on various views of self, philosophical, sociological, and psychological perspectives. And um, for this video, we are going to focus on the philosophical self or the philosophical views of the self. And from the term philosophy, Philosophy is from the Greek words, meaning uh, for from the word philo, meaning loving, and sophia means knowledge or wisdom. So at its simplest, philosophy means loving knowledge or loving wisdom. And the term philosophy, as originally used by the Greek, meant the pursuit of knowledge for its own sake. So Let's have on the next slide. Let's make it forward. So what is the self? How do, you, how do you define the self? Do you have the same definitions of self in the philosophical view? So let's find out how the philosophers define or describe the self during the early and the modern times. So in general aspects, you know, the self is a very complex um, complex part of our existence. And uh, this aspect makes us the self's integral parts. Because of this, this will lead to self-awareness, our self-esteem, our self-knowledge, and self-perception. And with these aspects, the person is able to alter, to change, to add, or to modify, you no, know, for the purpose of gaining social acceptance. Now, for this following slides, we are going to talk about the 11 philosophical views from Socrates down to Maurice Ponty. All right, so let's get started. Socrates. So Socrates is known for his method of inquiry in testing an idea, also known as Socratic questioning or Socratic method. And while his contemporaries are so busy solving the problem of the universe during the ancient times and so many other things, he was the first one to be concerned about the problem of the self. And he even believed in the dualistic or the dichotomous approach of the self, that every man is composed of body and soul. And so, for him, as a lover of knowledge, he believed that philosophy had a very important role to play in the lives of the people. So, he even mentioned a very famous or quotable quote from Socrates, that the unexamined life is not worth living. So you see, there is an importance for a person to search, to explore, to explore his self. And through that, when we know ourselves more, we can improve our lives. So that's what uh, Socrates meant. And also, he even mentioned that from this another quotable quote that one thing only I know and that is that I know nothing. Even though Socrates have uh, spent his whole life searching for uh, wisdom, looking for answers through questions arising, but at the end of the day, he have this conclusion in mind that the moment that he's been questioning things, mas marami ang ano, ang, ang tanong kesa answers na nare-receive niya. So, in other words, the more that we know, the more questions that we ask. And that's normal, right? So, for him, Socrates believed that as part of our existence, when we explore, examine, investigate the course of life, it's very important that 
through asking questions, there should also be a series of attempt or effort to seek answers for this or to support answers from the things that we are uh, encountering from this uh, world. So in other words, uh, Socrates, his view of self is very dualistic, no? And um, the importance of searching, examining, so that our life will be purposeful. So next is Plato. So Plato was a student of Socrates. And um, he was the one who founded the academy. Uh, during the time, uh, there was various searches for knowledge or fields. And this was the time that he had initiated the groupings you know, of disciplines. And at present time, this is what we call universities. Plato is also best known for his theory of forms that asserted the physical world is not really the real world because the ultimate reality exists beyond the physical world. And also, according to him, the soul is indeed the most divine aspect of being a human. And however, the divine that he meant was not uh, is uh, is not really that spiritual, but rather it's more on the intellectual connotation since Plato is in search for um, rational things. And he also believed that there should be a balance between the mind and the body. He's also a believer of what his teacher had taught him about dualistic approach that a man is composed of mind and body, but he believed that there should be a balance. And according to him, there are three parts of the soul, according to Plato. And this is the highlight of his view about the self. The first is the appetitive or the sensual part. This is the element that enjoys sensual experiences such as food, drink, and sex, the basic drives. And also, he has this, the rational or the reasoning. This is the element that forbids the person to enjoy the sensual experiences in contrary to the appetitive because rational is the part that loves the truth. Hence, it should rule over the other parts of the soul through the use of reason. And the third is the spirited or talks about the feeling. This is the element which is inclined toward the reason, but there is a great understanding on the demands of passion because it's it pertains to emotion. And it also has love for honor and victory. So come to think about it, these three parts of the soul, accordingly, as you see, the rational should rule over the other parts of this part of this um, soul. No? So that's the, that's the view of or the highlight of the view or the philosophical view of Plato. There are three parts and these are the three. Okay, moving forward, let's have St. Augustine. St. Augustine is also called St. Augustine of the Hippo. And he, is, he was one of the significant Christian thinkers during the time. He was also influenced by Plato's view about the dichotomy or the dualistic approach, which is human being with both soul and body. But he has this... Um, view also that there are two aspects, whether imperfect and capable of reaching immortality. He believed that all the knowledge that we come across leads to God. You know? So this is basically the, um, the grounds also for most of the Christians, the, the view of the self 
by St. Augustine. And so he believed that human beings through the senses could sense the material. However, these are all temporal or temporary objects as we interact with the material world. St. Augustine believed that um, right after this temporary world, we will meet the one who created us and that we have a good life there, no? Uh, the Christian way, no? So that's the significant uh, contribution of St. Augustine about the view of self. Also, let's have Rene Descartes. So who is Rene Descartes? Rene Descartes was a French philosopher a mathematician and a scientist, considered as the father of modern philosophy. And um, he proposed that doubt was a tool or a principal tool of disciplined inquiry. His method was called hyperbolical or metaphysical doubt, also sometimes referred to as methodological skepticism. So it is a systematic process of being skeptical about the truth of one's beliefs in order to determine which beliefs could be ascertained as true. His famous line, cogito ergo sum, or translated as, I think, therefore I am, had became a fundamental element of Western philosophy as it secured the foundation for the knowledge in the face of a radical doubt. So he even asserted that everything perceived daw sa atong mga senses could not be used as proof of existence because human senses could be fooled. He even added that um, kwan daw, uh, there was only one thing that could be sure of, of in this world and that was everything could be doubted. So that's the, that's the highlight of um, Rene Descartes. Uh, in turn, by doubting uh, his own existence, Descartes proved that there is a thinking entity that is doing the act of doubting. So uh, let's um, focus on Descartes. Uh, he even claimed that self, it, it is constant. It is not prone to change. It is not affected by time. And also our self, has is the only immaterial soul that remains the same throughout the time. It is an immaterial soul which is the source of our identity. Okay? So that's how René Descartes um, have given his notion about the self. Now let's go to John Locke. John Locke was a philosopher and a physician, which is uh, who is the most influential Enlightenment thinkers during the 18th century. And um, if Descartes described the self as a thinking thing, Locke expanded this definition of the self to include the memories of the thinking thing. Uh, he believed that the self is identified with consciousness, and the self consists of sameness of consciousness. And um, yun nga, uh, this is usually interpreted to mean that our self consists of memory, and that the person existing now is the same person yesterday because he or she remembers the thoughts, experiences, or actions of the earlier self. And so that provided him the reason that since the person is the same self in the passing of time, so he or she can be held accountable for past behaviors. Yet, he also insisted that the person can only be held accountable for behaviors he or she can remember. And he was best known for his belief that human mind is like a tabula rasa or a tabula rasa or an empty box, empty 
empty sheet, blank slate, blank sheet. So he was uh, known for that, which means that our knowledge of ourselves is derived from our experience. The more we go, we the more experience we get, um, the more information we we come through within ourselves. All right, so let's have David Hume. David Hume, uh, his he was a Scottish uh philosopher. I guess he's also a an econ uh, economist and historian during that age of enlightenment. But this is very interesting because he was the first, the fierce, rather, opponent of Descartes' rationalism. You know what? Um, rationalism is the theory that reason, rather than experience, is the foundation of all knowledge. And it's very opposite to what David Hume um is believing during the time. So he really disagreed about Descartes' um, notion. So he was one of the three main figureheads of the empiricism. So since Dili Mensha, rational uh, believer, is more onto empiricism, um, empiricism is the idea that the origin of all knowledge is sense experience, which is very opposite from what we have learned earlier from René Descartes. And um, according to him, all our knowledge of ourselves is derived from our human senses. And he was also um, made this bundle theory uh, wherein he described the self or the person which Hume assumed to be the mind as a bundle or a collection of our different perceptions that are moving in a very fast and successive manner. So therefore, it is in a perpetual flux, no? Perpetual flux. And so, uh, because of this, Hume's theory began by denying Descartes' view of the immaterial soul and of its experiences. So like Hume, an empiricist, um, an empiricist uh, he, be uh, he believed that human intellect and experiences are very limited. So therefore, it's very impossible now to attribute it to an independent persisting entity. So it's not the reason, very limited. That is why he concluded that self is merely made up of successive impressions. And now, uh, Hume divided the mind's perception into two groups, stating that difference between the two um, consists in degrees of force, uh, force and um, call this liveliness with which they strike upon the mind. So we have here impressions. And um, these are the perceptions that are most strong. They enter the senses with the most force. These are directly experienced and as a result from inward and outward sentiments. And on the other hand, we have also the ideas, which are less forcible or less lively counterparts of our impressions. And these are mechanisms that copy or reproduce sense data formulated based upon the previously um, perceived impressions. So in other words, um, this time you assert, uh, asserted that the notion of the self could not be verified through observation. Nag uh, argusha that if you can directly know, then what you know, are mere objects of what your senses are experiencing. So that's it. Um, in other words, uh, Hume's self is a passive observer similar to watching one's life pass before the eyes, like play or on a screen, whereby the total annihilation of the self comes at death. So that's David Hume's view about the self. Now let's move forward to another man which we recognize as Immanuel Kant. 
he was a, a central figure in the modern philosophy. In fact, his contributions to metaphysics, um, epistemology, uh, there's also ethics, and uh, which is very profound and the, uh, had a profound impact rather on almost every philosophical movement that followed him. So among other ideas, Kant proposed uh, that human mind creates the structure of the human experience. So see? And um, he even have this view that self is transcendental, which means the self is related to spiritual or the non-physical realm. All right? So uh, for him, the self is not in the body. And it does not have the qualities of body. Despite being transcendental, Kant stressed that our body and its qualities are still rooted to the self. So that's why he proposed that it is the knowledge that bridges the self and the material things together. So he has this um, two uh, types of self or kinds of consciousness of the self, which is focused on rationality, the inner self, which is the uh, one who is aware of the alterations on of our own state, including our uh, rational and psychological states, such as the moods, the feelings, sensations, pleasure, pain. So those are under the inner self. However, we also have this, what we call outer self. So the outer self as a component of the self includes our senses and the physical world. It is the common boundary between the external world and our inner self, no? So it gathers information from the external world through the senses, which the inner self interprets, uh, currently expresses, rather. So as uh, furthermore, Kant proposed that the self organizes information in three ways. So there are what we call raw perceptual input, recognizing the uh, concept, and uh, we reproduce now the imagination. So, yeah. Uh, in other words, Kant's self has a unified point of uh, self-reference. So that's Immanuel Kant. Okay, let's get to know Simon Freud. Now, Simon Freud was a philosopher, a physiologist, and a psychologist, and was one of the most influential thinkers of the 20th century. And his most important contribution, um, specifically in the field of psychology, was the psychoanalysis. And it is a practice that devised to treat those who are mentally ill through dialogue. So the vast majority of the European philosophers before Freud, such as Plato, Aristotle, Kant, Descartes, they regarded no, diba, the human beings as having an essence to which the self is ascribed. So that's what we have learned so far from them. Freud, however, did not accept the existence of any single entity that could be put forward as the notion of ourself. So his work in the field of psychoanalysis was really a groundbreaking during the time because it answered um, questions about the human psyche or psych in a way that no one else had before him. Very influential. And... Um, in psychology, the psyche is the totality of the human mind, both the conscious or the unconscious. So in his earlier structural division of the psyche, the human mind, uh, he distinguished three levels of consciousness. So what are this? These are consciousness. 
the preconscious or subconscious and the unconsciousness. So let's have first the consciousness. This deals our, with our awareness of the present perceptions. Like right now, what you feel right now, what are your thoughts, what are your memories, what are the fantasies at very any particular moment. But there's also another thing. We have this preconscious or commonly also called subconscious. And these are related to data or information that can readily be brought to our consciousness. So accessible lang siya, no? And lastly, which is the focus of Freud, no? Is the unconscious mind. And this refers to the data or information that we retained but not easily available to the individual's conscious awareness or scrutiny. So central to Freud's theory was the proposed existence of the unconscious, as I've mentioned earlier. That was really the focus of Freud. Um, it was so different from other philosophers or great thinkers because he is into unconsciousness. And according to him, um, there is this the existence of unconsciousness. Uh, this is because of the repository or uh, a repository for traumatic repressed memories, result of repressed memories, especially the uh, those who are abused, well, uh, either physically, uh, verbally, uh, sexually. So those um those uh experiences were repressed memories and uh there could be other reason and that's it's the source of anxiety which provokes drives that is socially or ethically unacceptable to the individual so it transferred to uh unconscious so as we said, psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic was the highlight of the career of Simon Freud. Um, let me tell you that it is a personality theory based on the notion that ang isang tao daw gets motivated by mga unseen or mga hindi um, nakikita mga ano, forces controlled by the conscious and the rational thought. So that's why Simon Freud did not ex exactly create the notion of the conscious versus the unconscious mind. But he certainly was responsible for making it popular and this was one of his main contributions to psychology. So there is what we call an iceberg model or the sea of the universal and uh, universal consciousness. So kung makikita niya dyan, di ba, yung Ito, that is our perceived reality, the conscious. But uh, going deeper, we have the preconscious level and we also have the unconscious level. No? So, yun yung ano, based sa mga definition of terms na, na mentioned natin from the past slide. And so, um, Freud uh, further structured the psych, the psyche or the mind into three parts. So, nag-extend siya ng kanyang theory and that's the uh, emergence of id, the ego, and the superego. And so, um, pag sinabi natin id, ito yung basic na mga impulses or ito yung mga ino-operate ng ng ating personality ay yung mga pleasures lang in life yung mga wishful impulses natin na kailangan masatisfy agad tapos regardless yan ha, sa mga consequences so kahit tung bata pa tayo ito na daw yung ano ito na daw yung um, basic personality natin kasi uh, imagine hindi natin um, kinoconsider na walang tulog yung parents natin. Umiiyak lang tayo kapag um, gustuhin natin kasi nagugutom tayo. Yung mga ganong bagay. So, id yun. Okay? Until such time, kahit malaki na tayo, may existence pa rin ng id. 
no? May mga may mga panahon na gusto yun talaga natin yung mga impulses natin. So other than that, we also have the emergence of our personality as the ego. Yung ego natin, siya yung nag-ooperate ng reality. Kung ano yung reality natin. And um often ang ano niya, yung trabaho ng personality na to is nako-compromise, nagko-compromise rather or nagpo-post uh, nagpo-postpone siya ng mga satisfaction. Ah, uh, kung baga pag humingi si Eid kasi gusto niyang kumain or gusto niyang uminom kahit wala pa sa oras, yung mga ganong bagay. Si ego either iko-compromise niya kasi siya yung nasa realidad or gagawin niya is ipopospone niya kasi nakikita niya hindi available yung mga ba, yung mga ninanais ni Eid. So yun yun ha, the executive or the um nag-ooperate mainly sa conscious na level. Pero pwede rin siya sa pre-conscious. At lastly, yung superego. So yung superego, this uh what we call uh, this is also what we call the moral moral um personality. So or principle in principle and um it incorporates it incorporates rather our values and the morals that we learn from the society. So yung function niya talaga is to control the impulses of id. Kinokontra niya palagi yung mga impulses ni id. And uh pini persuade niya si ego to choose moralistic goals, no? And to strive perfection rather than yung mga realistic ones lang. So yung super ego siya yung ating tinatawag na ideal principle in life. So yun. Yun yun, no? So according to Freud, um yung structure ng mind natin, the ego, the super ego and uh uh, e, uh ano ba yun? <laughs> Uh, according yun, di ba? So, yung mga different levels of consciousness na ito, sila yung nag uh, nakabase sa sa tao kung ano yung mag rain Pero dapat daw, kasi talaga, si ego, si ego talaga ang nag-rule over kasi siya yung nasa present. So, yun. That's what uh, Simon Freud um major contribution in terms of the philosophy of the self. Okay, moving forward. Let's have uh si Gilbert Ryle naman. So, si Gilbert Ryle a philosopher and a professor. And uh this is very also interesting aside from David Hume. Uh he produced a critic on Descartes' idea that the mind is distinct from the body. And uh, he wrote this, uh, the concept of mind, where he rejected the notion that the mental states are separable from the physical states. And uh, Ryle called yung distinction between sa mind and a matter na category mistake lang daw yun because of its attempt to analyze the relation between the mind and body. As if... um. This two, this two were the terms of the same categories. So, ano ba yung pinopoint out ni Gilbert Ryle against uh, Descartes' theory? Ito yun, no? The relation between the mind and uh, body are not isolated processes. Uh, in addition, sabi pa niya, uh, mental processes are intelligent acts and are not distinct from each other. And lastly, uh, according to Gilbert Ryle, uh, the operation of the mind is itself an intelligent, uh, an intelligent act. Yun. Yun yun, no? So, he criticized the theory that the mind is a place where mental images are apprehended, perceived, or remembered. Because he asserted that sensations, thoughts, and feelings do not belong to a mental world separate sa physical world natin no yung knowledge yung memory imagination and any other abilities or dispositions do not reside daw within the mind as if yung mind natin 
is a space which doon natin ini-store or nilolo- nilolocate natin yung mga mga lagay na ganyan. No? So if So here's the thing. So if Ryle believe that the concept of a distinct self is not real, so where do we get our sense of self? And uh, this is the assertion of Ryle that it is from our behaviors and actions. So for example, if iniisip mo na uh, mabait kang tao, so dahil yun sa mga na na nagawa mo ng mga mabuting bagay no sa kapwa or sa mga uh, kapaligiran mo so yun uh, in his view in the simplest form na pwede natin siyang i-define sabi doon your actions define your own self concept or who you are um kaya nga uh, Ito nga yung very, ano, uh, ano ba yung naughty part. Kasi, kontra siya kay Descartes. So, yung kay Descartes, kilala si Descartes sa I think, therefore, I am. Si Gilbert Ryle, ginawa niyang I act, therefore, I am. So, yun. That's who Gilbert Ryle and that's what his view about the self. Your actions define who you are. Okay, let's have Paul Churchland. So he was a philosopher and a professor which is known for his studies in neurophilosophy and the philosophy of uh mind. And um he believed that uh there is nothing beyond the sensory experience. Uh Churchland also view the immaterial and changing soul that does not exist because it cannot be experienced now by the by the senses. So, impossible para sa kanya. So, another thing, he insisted the idea of a mind uh, or soul is not in consonance with the physical with the uh with the physical changes that have occurred in the hereditary characteristics of the human species over sa mga susunod na mga generations. So, specifically si Churchland lang naman yung ano nag-idea ng eliminative materialism claiming that people's common sense understanding of the mind or the folk psychology is false grabe strong siya no and uh, it's a strong claim and that certain classes of mental states which most people believe uh, do not exist so yun yung mga notion ni ano no ni Paul Churchland and Um, to prove this point, uh, Churchland pointed out na yung mga mental conditions such as depression, it is technical, technically wrong daw to say that the person is out of his mind. ba? Diba? May mga experience tayong ganun kapag uh, yung tao na de-depress, sabi natin na mga yan yung tao na wala na sa, wala na sa kanyang sarili or wala na sa kanyang Uh, katinuan, ganon. Hindi daw yun, no? According to Churchland, because neuroscientists have found that brain activity and even the brain shape appears to be associated with severe mood disorders. So, depende talaga sa physical brain daw. And moreover, he pointed out that in a severe head injury, uh, yung biktima, uh, yung personality niya, nag-change talaga. No? Kasi nga, dahil doon sa brain structures or brain functioning. So, he pointed out that uh, if the mind is a separate, uh, were a separate entity, then the victim should have retained his or her personality despite the damage of the brain. Pero hindi ganun yung case, di ba? So, he asserted the sense of self originated from the brain itself. And that his self is a product of all the electrochemical signals that were produced by the brain. Thus, si Churchland in assert niya na the sense of self originated from this. Hindi sa kung anong bagay. So, he believed that the physical brain and not the 
imaginary mind gives us our sense of self. Yun. So, very, uh, ano siya, kasi neurologist, uh, may, may influence nga siya sa neurology, no? So, yun. Punta naman tayo sa last nating um, great thinker, si Maurice Merleau Ponty. So, si Maurice Merleau Ponty was a philosopher and author which emphasized the body as the primary site of knowing the world. And um, his idea is on embodied subjectivity. When we talk about embodied, It's a term that is a verb meaning to give a body to usually an imp- immaterial substance like a soul. And subjectivity on the other hand in philosophy if we if we are in uh in the language of philosophy it is the state of being a subject an entity na nagpo-possess ng mga conscious experiences such as yung mga perspectives natin, yung feelings, yung beliefs yung desire so yun and moreover a subject acts upon or affects some other entity so this is what we call in philosophy the object kasi yun yung apektuhan so a subject therefore dun sa sinabi ko is something that exists can take action and can cause real effects on the object so Kilala din sa ano si Maurice na nagreject ng Cartesian mind body dualism and he insisted that the mind and the body are intrinsically connected intertwined no yung ganun so by emphasizing the primacy of the body and an experience he also veered away the away from the established notion na Uh, it's the center of conscious uh, that the con uh, the center of the consciousness now is your mind. Um, he also uh asserted that human beings are embodied subjectivities and that yung pagkilala natin or sa ating sarili should begin from this fundamental fact. So he even added that the body is not a mere house. where the mind resides. Rather, it is through the lived experience of our body that you perceive, uh, you are informed, and you are interacting with the world. So, further, furthermore, about Merleau Ponty, he argued na yung body is part of the mind, and the mind is part of the body. So, yun nga, intrinsically kasi, kasi, kasi sila. So, although there could be a standalone mental faculty para dyan, na nagpa-perceive ng mga sense experiences, it needs the body to receive these experiences, act on its perceptions, and mag-communicate sa external world. no So, uh, according to Merlu, the body acts what the mind perceives as unified one. So therefore, sabi niya, physical body is an important part of the self. Unified. Ganon. So, doon nagtatapos or nag end yung ate, ating lecture on the philosophical views. Yung 11, si Socrates, si Plato, St. Augustine, René Descartes, John Locke, David Hume, Immanuel Kant, Simon Freud, Gilbert Ryle, Paul Churchland, and Maurice Merleau-Ponty. See you on the next video.